Hello, and thank you so much for coming by the channel today. I really appreciate it. I know there are a lot of booktubers, so that you stopped here at Road Reads, thank you so much. My name is Susan, and today is a January 2022 reading wrap up. I read so many good books this month, and by read, I pretty much mean listened to because it was definitely the month of audiobooks and they kind of saved me this month. Uh, so let's just get right into it with the first novel I read, and which it was such an amazing way to start the year 2022. And that was Richard Powers' Bewilderment. Um, I had seen this on Instagram and I, I, I thought, hmm, that, you know, people seem to be liking this book. <laughs> But I saw Robert at Barter Hordes, his post on Instagram, and it said something to the effect of reading bewilderment, like reminded him of why he reads. And I thought, well, heck, that sounds pretty good. So I used my Audible credit and got the audiobook and just loved it. Um, it's the story of a widowed astrobiologist, and his name is Theo, and his nine-year-old son, Robin. They have, um, they've recently lost Robin's mom, Theo's wife, in a car crash, and she was like an environmental attorney fighting for the environment, and um, uh, so we follow a very, um, Robin, the nine-year-old, he's He's suffering from eco trauma, which I didn't even know that phrase. And apparently, a lot of children suffer from eco trauma. And so, so there's that aspect to this book. And then there's the astrobiology aspect to the book. So instead of nighttime bedtime stories, the dad, who's an astrobiologist, takes his son to these imaginary, you know, universes. And it's pretty amazing. Like there was a lot of science and um, astrobiology things that went over my head in this book. Um, but I still loved it because to me, when they talked about those things, it was like poetry. It was just so beautifully written. This is my first Richard Powers book. I have since um, used another Audible credit to get the overstory. So that is what he is well acclaimed for. Um, I watched uh, Karen at Katie Books, his review of Bewilderment. So if you want an opposite opinion, go check out Karen's video. I'll try to remember to link it below. But I have to say, I just loved it. If you told me it's a book about astrobiology and nature, and like, I, I would have been like, eh, okay, like I wouldn't have been enthused, but this was such a beautiful read. And again, I listened to it on audiobook and I highly recommend that, um, that I, I highly suggest it. I rated it four stars. It, it could have been five. I, 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 I have stuck with four, but as this year progresses, if I still think about it a lot, we'll see. It might it might get bumped up to a five. <laughs> Speaking of five, the next book I read um, is my first this month of three Agatha Christie books. I've never read three Agatha Christie books in a month, but I have found that when I'm not quite feeling myself mentally, maybe even physically, Agatha Christie is just a lifesaver. <laughs> and I I subscribe to Scribd. So like for, I don't know, I think it's $10 a month, you have access to their audiobooks and their ebooks. And I listened to Five Little Pigs on audiobook. And it, it really, it, it was not my, it was my least favorite Christie book of the month, but I still really enjoyed it. Um, it's a Perot book. And, um, a um, a young woman approaches Poirot saying um, her mother had been um, accused and sentenced to, um, for her for poisoning um, her husband. So the the young lady's father, like I don't know, sixteen years earlier, something like that, and her mother left her a note that was to be given to her when she turned 21 to say, I didn't do it. Like rest assured, her mother has since passed, but she has left this letter to her young, her, to her 21 year old daughter saying, I didn't kill your father. And so she goes to Poirot to find out 
who did? I, you know, I want to find out the truth. And if my mother did do it, I want to know that too, because she wants to get married. She wants to have children, but she wants to do that knowing the truth about her parents' past. So um, Perot looks into all of this and it's called Five Little Pigs because there's five main suspects, five people that we focus in on. I have to say, I guessed who the person was, but I still really enjoyed this. Again, listened to it on audio, gave it uh, three stars. Then the next book I read, I went back to, you guys heard how much I love Jane Harper's The Dry. I think I read that in December. Um, so I read her uh, most recent novel, The Survivors. Um, I gave that three and a half stars. I, I, that, I mean, that's so close to a four star, which is what I gave The Dry. Um, or did I give The Dry five? Now I'm curious. <laughs> Um, that's a good thing about book journals. Um, I gave the dry four stars. I gave the survivors three and a half, but it was just really good. I mean, this is one of the few books I did not listen to on audio. I had it on my Kindle. Um, I'll often buy Kindle books when I see that they're like $2. And so I had gotten this quite a while ago when it was on sale for like two or $3. And Jane Harper, she's just very... She just sucks you in. Now it had many of the same characteristics as the dry where, um, you know, uh, a middle-aged, middle-aged, a man comes back to his hometown where people, some people blame him for, um, a, for de a death or actually in this case, two deaths that happened, um, you know, a couple decades before, which is the same as with the dry. Um, and uh, she's just very act atmospheric. This is a small coastal town in Tasmania. And um, yeah, so it's kind of the, um, the, young, ma the young man coming back and dealing with uh, his past, but also there's a, a body found on the beach right at the beginning of the novel. So then dealing with that too. And if you're looking for just a real solid mystery thriller, I recommend The Survivors for sure. The next book I read, I went back to Agatha Christie on audio and in preparation for the movie release or the latest movie release of Death on the Nile, which I think is February 11th, it comes out in theaters. Uh, I read Agatha Christie's Death on the Nile and I enjoyed this immensely. I gave this four stars. It was just so good. If you're just looking for, especially if you are a member of Scribd, like listen, listen to Death on the Nile. Uh, also on this one, I also guessed who did it, um, but um, I didn't like, I didn't have all the whys and wherefores figured out, but I kind of, I had honed in on how it would conclude. Um, but this was, nice and twisty and turny and Agatha Christie really I'm just really appreciating her writing more and more of the master of just telling these especially when you can can you compare them to modern thrillers these seem so much more simple but I find myself just as engaged and um I just really I really enjoy them it is genuine so if, if you're looking for a good Agatha Christie on audiobook, listen to Death on the Nile. Although I'm going to do one more Christie book in this review, which was my favorite of the month. So stay tuned for that. Okay, the next book I read. Oh, okay. So I had never read a Diane Satterfield book, even though I see it all over Instagram. I read Once Upon a River. I gave this four stars. Again, maybe this should have been five. It was delightful on audio. And I have a feeling had I read it, I would have felt the same way because it's always hard for me to tell how beautiful writing is 
listening to an audiobook, but um, I highly suspect that her the writing was beautiful because I was just enchanted. This was like a fairy tale for adults being read to me. I could not wait to get back to this audiobook any chance I got. It was a long audiobook, so I think I think it took me like four days to get through it, but so worth it. I mean, really, I could not wait to keep listening to it. Um, it is set in the late 1800s, so Victorian England um, at an old inn on the River Thames. And we just get to see this small community, tight community with kind of like outsiders, but that come into this community and they all weave together. And again, it felt very fairy tale esque. And if you read it a certain way, part of the ending is supernatural. And usually I have an issue with that, but I did not have an issue with that in this book. Um, I just found it uh, interesting enchanting. <laughs> I can't recommend Once Upon a River enough. And if you like audiobooks, that was such a good way to read it. So then, so that came out in 2018. So then I went back to her uh, 2006 novel, her debut novel, which I think everyone in the world but me has read, The 13th Tale. Uh, this one was a little, um, I, I rated it less. I gave it three and a half stars, but that was, that could have been my mood. Again, I listened to this on audio. Again, it was a long audio book. I think this one took me maybe five days to get through. And I just felt myself, my mood more depressed during this book. Um, it had darker, uh, darker things happening in this book, but very interesting. Like, I mean, there was no way I was going to stop listening to this book. Like, I needed to know where is this all going? Um, but it was just beautifully written again, and listening to it on audiobook was, I keep saying enchanting, but that's because that's how I felt. I felt enchanted reading, listening to these two Diane Setterfield books. If you have read these books, let me know in the comments which one you preferred, The 13th Tale or Once Upon a River. All right, the next book I read, oh my gosh, this is the only one I actually read with a paper copy, The Remains of the Day. Okay, so late last year, I asked you guys for some five-star recommendations. And this was recommended um, to me as a possible five-star read. I just, I was not in the right place to read this book. <laughs> it, I read it in one day. It pretty much devastated me. Um, I wasn't prepared for that. I did, I did not know. I knew this was like about an English butler. I've never seen the movie, which is crazy. I love Anthony Hopkins and Emma Thompson, but let's put it this way. This devastated me so much. I have not watched the movie yet. Like I need to like mentally recoup before I'm prepared to watch the movie. I gave this four stars in the beginning because I felt so unsatisfied at the end. And then I'm like, Susan, that's kind of the whole point. <laughs> it got bumped up to five stars pretty quickly. Um, in the beginning, I wasn't, I wasn't getting it. Like, okay, this English butler is going on a road trip. And I was just like, okay, people love this book. Why? And then, then it hits you and you, you see what Ishiguro is doing. And it just devastated me. Whenever there's like that existential crisis, it gets to me so much. His writing is impeccable. I don't know. I don't know if it affected me this way because of where I was <laughs> when I read it or if it would have affected me this way no matter where I was mentally <laughs> at the time. But I will definitely be rereading this. Uh, anyone who's told me this was a five-star book, you were right. Ouch. It hurts. Um, 
yeah. I watched, after I read it, I watched several interviews um, with Ishiguro uh, about the remains of the day. And, oh, wow. I just, I didn't know. I didn't know that's what the kind, that kind of, I didn't know that this book was going to be that kind of book. So I had to bring myself back up and finish the month with my final book and my final final Agatha Christie book, The Murder on the Lynx, which is the second in the Pro series, and I loved it. This was my favorite Agatha Christie. It was the most complex um, that I read this month. The audiobook, um, this one I think I got the audiobook from my library. Uh, like on the overdrive system for free. And um, like I said, it's the most complex. We get to know Proyo a little more. I'm just really becoming enchanted with him. Um, I think I may focus my f future Agatha Christie reading, in, you know, this year on Proyo because I, I feel like I'm on a roll with him. Um, but I, yeah, I give this one five stars. <laughs> Again, I rate within the genre. So does this compare with... Does Murder on the Links compare with The Remains of the Day? No. Before an Agatha Christie book, I felt like this was five stars. Um, and again, I listened to it on audio and I have since like just been re-listening to it. I haven't read another book since I finished Murder on the Links. Uh, I just keep just keep re-listening to it. I know like to, today's January 31st. So tomorrow, like I need to start reading again. <laughs> <laughs> but I just enjoyed it so much and um I won't even I won't even tell you what the book is about Agatha Christie books for the most part you don't need to know what they are just go into it and enjoy the ride I've just really been enjoying that so anyway that those are the eight books I read this month and I would love to hear if you've read any of these or what you loved in the month of January let me know in the comments and I'll see y'all next time bye